let's, without further ado, we are starting a new series called the Inside Star Citizen Review, and we are going to go over together what I think and what you think about Star Citizen, where it's at, development, all that nerdy, geeky, fun stuff that we love, except possibly Red Bear's wife. So let's just, let's just get into it right now. Let's just, whoa. I'd rather be at this party right now. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. Okay, we will get into that after these messages. No. <laughs> All right, Geeky Nerd is now on. <laughs> Red's like, she might not care as much as we do. It's great to see you guys, by the way. I Star miss you guys. Star Citizen's development is always looking ahead to the next feature, the next optimization. Yes, the next yes. Awesome and they better, because if they don't, we'll all be angry. So come on, come on, Disco. Make us happy today. <laughs> and content, but it can be just as important to continue making improvements to existing aspects of the persistent universe whenever possible. The members of our environment- First off, I, who likes the new Inside Star Citizen setup? I think it's a little bit more produced than the ATV review, or than, than ATV. Uh, I, so I'm kind of digging it, but it, I miss the old school vibe too, which was like that kind of like family, like talk about anything vibe, but you know, they're, they're getting a little bit more, uh, Hollywood on it. So like, I'm not quite sure yet. I, I need, I've watched three so far. seems almost the same as ATV with slight differences, but, um, let's just see. Let's just see. I'm curious to see what you guys think in the comments. Environment art team are doing just that to get things started for us this week. Let's find out what they're up to. In the last couple of months, we had the opportunity to revisit the mm -hmm. underground facilities from a lighting perspective. <laughs> right. when we initially we'll make it fun, dude. I'm going to make it fun for you. We had only four or five different variations of All right. the layout. They're getting, they're getting back into the lighting. I saw this today. I saw it with the motorcycles. I was thinking to myself, like, they got the new tumbrils out, you know, and they're like motorcycles. So I thought to myself, like, that was kind of interesting to me. Like, like maybe like motorcycle gang, like do old school like pirates on motorbikes or just like hellions on 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 earth or whatever planet you're on and it kind of like spiked my interest and i thought this was like the perfect way to start uh the new series here they're always the talking about lighting i love lighting but they're always talking about know, it placing the lights in the, pretty much the exact same locations for each room because they're the same rooms but we were noticing that as we were doing more playthroughs and we were placing more props uh based on like mission spawning that uh certain areas or npcs or props were missing contact shadows so we added more shadow casting on the existing light. That's setups. pretty impressive. That's actually pretty impressive. And as we want to build our locations more modern. I'm digging that three dimensional lighting, like a little bit more atmospheric kind of like fog effects and everything that we were talking about with the earlier tech. But like you can see like three dimensionally, it's a little bit more, it has a little bit more depth with this new lighting technology. They were talking about um, a, an episode or two ago about how they were taking lighting and making the GPU do most of the work, which I thought was really kind of fascinating that they were putting the work onto the GPU on that processor rather than the uh, chipset rather than the uh, the PC chipset. So I was in favor of that when I heard that. Um, let's see here. Let's see what they're talking the future, about now. It makes sense to move yeah. the lighting away yeah. from yeah, the mammal. entire environment and into each kind of individual module and just make sure that it blends nicely between each room and each environment. This means that in the future, when we want to generate more layouts and more underground facilities, all of the lighting is already pre I like how they're doing the before and after. Development. I really like how they're doing the before and after so you can see the differences. Um, I, I expect that it just is going to get better and better, like really. Time a lot, it minimizes bugs and just makes life a lot easier in general. I love Artcorp, by the way. I absolutely love Artcorp. So I'm going to show some of the uh, updates with uh, Artcorp that we've been doing, um, specifically on the cityscape adding more variation to it. So here we've got a current tile as it looks so, uh, at the moment. So, you know, as as much as this is interesting with Arcorp and like the planets within Stanton system, like how many of you guys think that this is going to take ages to produce as many planets as they need uh, with with the galaxy that it's set uh, in the arc map? Like there's tons and tons of of systems. How many guys, how many systems do you guys think that they've actually like started? I think they've started a lot more than they're letting on with Stanton. Uh, if you guys watch like an older video I'd done uh, where they, they actually talk about Terra and having a lot of it designed, but we're, we're, we just don't know it yet. So I think there's a lot behind the scenes. Red Bear says at the moment, it's very buggy though, but as soon as it will be up to par, it will be nice to visit. Yes, it is very buggy. There's so much texturing. There's so much, there's so much going on with an art corp. It, it is, it can be very buggy. It can. 
that has to improve. Very good point. We did a lot Very more work point. on this. So we've got kind Very of a lot point, more realistic Bear. placements with adverts. It's kind of feeling a bit more like Times Square or like Piccadilly Circus. Uh, less flat on the walls and just uh, more parallax and uh, just much cooler look and, and, and the trenches are way deeper now. The other things we've been doing are redistributing buildings. So we've got um, some buildings that kind of weren't seen that often, like the mm. metaclassical style of buildings. So we're seeing more of these now, mm. which kind of indicate a kind of a past of art court where the, the, the fashion and the architectural style was a little different. <laughs> I really like when they're like, uh, I like when they are explaining these buildings, you know, it's very phallic. They're like, look how long and tall and strong this particular building is. Reminds me of something similar that I see when I go to the restroom. Reduce the amount of red buildings in Art Corp, so there's less of that sea of red, which I know everyone loved. I'm kind of glad they got rid of all the red. New buildings like these ones, uh, which are a little bit more beefy. Oh, it's beefy. Like See? See what I'm saying about Phallic? Kind of an interesting shape. Wow. So just adding, Not saying, uh, no comment. A few new buildings. No comment on that building. More unique shape to them. <laughs> Mammal. And Missed of course, you, bro. we've got something we've mentioned before. The, the donut, donut building. building. Oh, donut it is called pile. the donut. Wait. It's really nice. Is that called the donut? Is that what we're all calling it now? The donut building? I believe it's so. Adding to the kind of shape language of Art Corp. So we're not just seeing blocky buildings everywhere. We've got this nice circle. It's good to see you, Mammal. It's good on. to be back, man. I'm going to try and do this every Thursday from here on out. Try. In. So we don't see like the same advert like five times in one view. So all this hopefully will add more variation and more breakup and more interest to art corp cityscape um we've liked doing this i hope you guys enjoy it when when it when you get it so for the last couple episodes this is the point where we'd include some of the outtakes that occurred during filming we don't have that this week it's because nobody's going to hand me a dog today no writers are going to crash the hosting this time instead <laughs> we're going to move it's right on funny. ahead into the next segment like this one, where we sat in on one of the many sync calls between team members from different studios. So here's Josh and Yogi with a review of ship audio improvements between Alpha 3.4 and 3.5. Audio is huge. Okay, audio is huge. I did notice some advancements in the actual cockpit. And in atmospheric flight, I noticed a little bit of differences too. So let's see if they go over these things. Sound and audio is very huge. There's a lot of like uber geeks out there that will say there should be no sound you're in space and i get it that is an old debate um red bear says i still think the whole planets they have are kind of placeholders yes me too as well i think some they've got more advanced than others red um i wonder when they put more content on the planets with more use uh for the ground vehicles also yes my tiny hope that was our corp with all this non-flight zones made that possible but unfortunately it's not in yet I feel your pain, man. I, I'm right there with you, actually. I, you couldn't have said it any better, dude. I kind of have that that whole vibe going on with myself with our corp as well. Um, audio, though. Let's see Let's see what they're going to talk about. They're probably going to go like before, like 3.4. Here's 3.5. Here's They're probably going to do the differences like they did with the lighting so that they're showing improvements. Is it enough to like satisfy those that are like completely in that camp of this is never going to come out? I don't know. Probably not. You know, like that's one. that's the video I'm thinking of doing. Uh, as well it's like kind of like the amount of time that's taken and the people that are like screaming about the fact that it's taken too long I, I don't know if I should make a video about that or not like you know because it's all relative really to like how long you can wait for it but I, I just feel like that's beating like a dead horse that 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 conversation let's hear the sounds that seems a little hello, Josh hello that's that was before let's this is before ship audio difference between 3.4 and 3.5 And I think well, this I think is before 3.5. <laughs> it's just following really what the ship is doing, and but not much more beyond that. It's just a transition between two very, very static sounds rather than, you know, being like a dynamic, evolving thing. The drama we have now on the transition between like afterburner and normal flight and when you're pulling away from the stationary and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So let's take a look at 3.5 instead. Yeah. Exactly, Red. I think what I like most is that the noises from the thrusters, they're not just coming from the thrusters anymore, but the whole ship is now talking to you. We have these, yeah. these proxy points in the cockpit now that tell you what the sound of the ship is, as opposed, as opposed to the what's the ship of like each individual thruster. And I tried to play sounds like, you know, look at the ship, where would this sound actually be coming from? I thought about where the rotation... 
you know, actually, if you think about all the different roids and the objects that are out there flying, that's kind of an achievement in itself as well. Uh, Angle says there's not going to be a whole new content without server meshing and server side OCS. Holy shit, you are so right, dude. That is like one of the biggest obstacles and fears I have with the project angle. I, I, I'm like really that's kind of where I'm worried about. I think that is one of the biggest obstacles angle sound would come from where the, the surgy sounds would come from and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it feels so much better than 3.4. Okay, yeah. so I think that's for space combat. Let's take yeah. a look at atmospheric you stuff. You can see that in atmospheric entry as well, the camera shake. So we'll look at that. Oh yeah, this sounds unhealthy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can you can see the camera shake there on the, when the with the combination of the kind of flame cone sounds and the vibration sounds happening there. There. That yes. One. Yes, very, very true. Like I'm, I'm telling you right now. Like what Red is saying. Um, you notice the server is in pain since the new Planet R Corp, and I, I really think that what they were talking about in terms of just the lighting is something that they're going to do graphically speaking with putting more load on the GPU rather than the uh, chipset, like so, rather than the PC, you know, itself. And I hopefully that'll kind of ease things up. But yes, also that has a lot to do with the uh, the information being passed to the server and back to your own PC as well. So like server meshing for those aren't who aren't kind of aware of it is basically like the relation between your computer and the server, both on the server side and on your side and how well the data is streamed between the two. Uh, it has a lot to do with being able to play in an instance with other people. Like we want these massive battles. We're going to need to have like instancing like that has never been seen before you're going to have you're going to have to have hundreds on one server and i think at this point that is not possible and that's like a positive for those who are saying this is never going to come out because that's i think a very big tech hurdle you know i really think that that's a huge tech hurdle so it should be interesting at least this year to see where they come with it i think this year they're really they're going to focus more on squadron 42 than anything else what is going on kel good to see you here I'm talking nerd talk now. Um, that flame cone sounds way more detailed than it was in 3.4 because it actually it changes depending on the speed you're going on, on the temperature of the ship and stuff, rather than just being one loop. And are you guys cool? Are you guys cool right now with the atmospheric flight still, as far as like the gravity? And do you feel like the planet's kind of pulling you down uh, in in particular moon areas that you feel like are weighty enough to actually have? I'm still feeling like I feel better about the sounds that I'm hearing, uh, but I'm not quite sure. I still feel like you know the the atmosphere is true to its nature as far as what the stats say. So I'm still kind of. I do love the new flight model. I do love the new flight model, uh, uh, Mammal. I was going to say something about that as well. Um, Angle says, that's the reason I watch pretty closely at the game from Amazon New World because they're using Lumberyard and I already have uh, more than a thousand players on one server. Yes, because of Lumberyard, they really were able to open it up, Angle. Uh, Amazon's like ridiculous. Uh, Bezos, ridiculous amounts of money. I think he can just about do anything technically that he wants to now. It's just absolutely off the scale ridiculous the 150 billion dollars minus the 30 that his wife got in the divorce i still think that 120 billion dollars can figure this problem out <laughs> bear uh <laughs> kelly's like lurk i i'm going to skip the geek talk right now <laughs> also you can hear you're missing you you're missing out kelly against the wind hey thank you What's going on, DY? Yeah, so when you turn off the engines, you're just getting the environment feedback and vibrations. Thank you so much. Thank well. you, 1974, for following the channel, bro. Yeah, Bezos got divorced to the wife, DY. He lost $30 billion. She took $30 billion, which is nothing to Bezos. Bezos just basically, you know, he's like, here you go, $30 bill. Nothing, nothing but a G thing on Bezos' side. I dig the FM. A few ships could use some tweaking. Yes, certainly, 74. Certainly. And in three, four, when you turned the engines off, you'd lose all of the sounds because of the way they were triggered. They were all tied at the thrusters. But here we can, you can hear the um, just the vibration and the environment feedback sounds by themselves. Yeah, I've done that before. That's pretty cool. It the sounds. How systemically everything works. Like gliding uh, almost, you know. Down, but like for speak. instance, like for instance, and, and that was the Gladius. For instance, you turn off a Gladius, I would expect more than just like a gliding sound. Yes, it's got the wing structure. Yes, it has the physics to glide a little bit. But I would still expect it a little bit more dramatic than that. And and like I, I want to feel like a pool. Like I want to feel, I feel like if there's a little bit more pool, depending upon the actual statistics of the moon or the planet, I would expect there to be a little bit more pool. But again, that's all relative to the actual statistics on the planet. 
Uh, D.Y. says, oh, crap, I thought you were speaking metaphors. No, he actually got a divorce to his wife. Bezos did D.Y. And by the way, D.Y., it's excellent to see you. It's great to see you guys. I missed Sounds you guys so much. Away and you have this eerie, eerie, silent atmosphere thing going on, and which is really creepy and tells really, oh, if that happens actually in the game, then oh, I am in trouble, right? Because I'm yeah. going to crash, on, crash to the planet. He almost, almost looks like... Case, okay, he... That one guy... Turned on again. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He almost looks like a Peter Dinklage. Like, this guy almost looks like Peter Dinklage. I don't know if you guys are getting your Game of Thrones fix on, but, like, I'm just saying, this looks like a little bit more of, a, like, a, a giant-sized Peter Dinklage right here. But I really, really like that, that, that moment. Let's take a look at the at the last video. <laughs> we had a couple of backers who did a lot of nice videos with the 3.5 and the 3.5 Evocati and PTU versions. And those videos also pretty much show show off what, what the audio is. Yeah, new flight model is okay, says uh, Angle, but still needs a lot of tweaking. Dogfight against AI or players sucks big time. The dogfighting has to get better. Uh, I think what they did with the new flight model in terms of the actual thrust and the physics when it when it comes to uh, flying is they tried to slow it down so that it was more like kind of an elite dangerous experience. I think that's what they're kind of getting towards. I think they're going to tweak it towards that, which I would not like be completely upset about because honestly, I like uh, the movements in uh, Elite Danger. Some would disagree with me, but I think that's what they're trying to slow it down a little bit. But Angle's right. While I like the new flight model, which I do, I like what they're trying to do. They still need to like tweak it a bit so that it feels a little bit more real. We all want, we all want a little bit more of that real feel. Bear says, I guess I'm the only person on the planet who never seen an episode of Game of Thrones. That... I'm telling you what, I've got a friend who's never seen Game of Thrones because his ex-girlfriend talked about it religiously and it like turned him off to it, right? It's pretty funny. Mamo says, I just uh, today about Game of Thrones for getting a Starbucks. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Starbucks coffee in the shot, dude. That was like the biggest news. That was the biggest news. <laughs> Still love the Gladius, the look of the Gladius. Now, like, it's always been like a very sexy, like F-17 feel. I realized now it's... Uh... <laughs> The dark so episode, weird. we call it, D.Y. I mean, being inspired by, by real things is also something that we uh, went for. We have a lot of military and uh, airline pilots, and we actually reached out to people um, to ask, hey, man, how, how does it actually, how does it feel, and how does it, does it, how do things sound like when you're actually flying a, a fighter or a glider or airline, right, or an yeah. airline jet? Um, and all that, all these discussions went into 3.5. Mm. So yeah, there's a lot of more stuff to come and we're looking, we're really looking How many to of this. you how many of you think that these talks are like like apparently they just pulled this spontaneously, but it doesn't feel spontaneous. Like it feels like these two were scheduled to talk one another. But I'm sure like in the working life, like the talks are nothing like this. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this might be a little scripted here, but I'm sure like the talks like this are a little bit more hectic when it's like work time, you know? I like to get the renegade myself, says 74. Yeah. And uh, I'm I'm actually looking forward. Do they talk about these bikes that I saw in the uh, thumbnail? To show that off. <laughs> now, if we've spent any it, amount it of time is a bit. on the spectrum, the and last and and, weeks. and that's the one thing, Bear, that I think like they need to little work on a little bit. And I think they needed to do that with ATV as well. I said that on the ATV review when we were doing it. Is that I felt like they were a little bit too scripted. That's why I liked when Chris and Sandy were. I had this stint where I loved when Chris and Sandy were on because when Chris and Sandy were, were on, you could tell where they kind of like riffed off of one another. And I actually enjoyed that. I thought that was good for ATV. Uh, so this like Inside Star Citizen new series is starting. I'm still kind of like up to I'm kind of up in the air about it. You know, like the more I watch, I'm wondering if it's going to be just like too scripted or not. I think Chris should play a more pivotal role in these, especially since, you know, people really want to hear from Chris. Uh, I think people who are working in SIG don't want Chris on because they're worried he's going to trip up and say something maybe he shouldn't, <laughs> you know, that type of thing. Calling all devs. Yeah, calling all devs is a good show. You've yep. probably heard people speculating about the Persistent Universe's next vehicle edition from Tumbrel. And this week, we're Here ready we to pull back the curtain and let our developers introduce you to that wheeled warrior of wickedness. Thanks, Mike. The Tumbrel Ranger. All right. When this gets into the game, I really want people to get on the bike be wild and really a little just bit. feel the road beneath their feet and their and beneath their between their thighs. What? <laughs> what? I mean, like, okay, so Paul Jones was building this thing, right? And like, we have to put components in the bike, and hey, you literally had to put the components Good to see you, bro. in between your legs because there's no more room on this thing because it's so small. Like it's literally there is a power plant in between your legs. So that's healthy. 
<laughs> That's pretty funny. He keeps going back to it, making it very sexual. Okay, I'm I'm interested in this. Oh, okay, so here's here's my thoughts on it before we even get into this. I'm thinking they're gonna do variants. I'm thinking they're gonna have different variants on this. At least I hope they do because like two things I'm thinking well even like three kind of things I'm thinking one there should be like one that's like a racing one there should be one that's like all kind of pimped out combat style and I'm not quite sure what the th like if there's a third one I think you'd only need the two but I'm curious to see what they're going to do if they're even going to do variants do they have variants when we started actually making this I wanted to make something that was small and compact and something that could fit on your ship no matter what it was. <laughs> Bear. I think Paul went ahead and just did that and it looks pretty cool to me. Tumble Ranger is a tumble. Oh, they do 74? Sweet, dude. The market with their motorcycle, sort of an off-road, do-it-everything kind of vehicle. Okay. Two wheels, but quite flexible, basically. So it's like part adventure bike, part race bike, part All right. combat bike. Oh, wait, that sounds like they're just doing one, though, 74. The three versions of the Tumble oh, Ranger oh my God. are what I we're calling it. the Touring version. Okay, while I am happy that they did this, at the same time, there's that part of me where they're like, ah, they're trying to get that money, too, right? So they're, like, trying to offer it to everybody. But I, I overall, I'm kind of glad there's different variants. I'm saying the one in the middle, yeah, I, I can tell. So what would the left one be, like a mission running one? And then the middle's like a racing one, and then the one on the right obviously looks more like combat style. I don't know why a bike. We got already a couple. Yeah, you know, we do. We do. That's a very good point. We do with the Knox, uh, the the alien version bike. Um, but I don't know. They probably had to have like a Terran, like super Terran version. What's up, Darth? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. What is for pizza delivery? <laughs> the uh, combat version and the tuner version. The touring version basically has a place for three a mission version. boxes so that you can pick up a, oh, that's a mission cool. box, store it on there, and then take that's it to cool. your destination. Not much of a mission grinder, but... The version basically just has guns on it, and it's meant to give you some offensive power. That's nice. I like that the one. The tuner version is the racing version. That's cool. It's got that extra boost capability and an extra yeah, right, battery Darth? so you can go a Tour the longer. pizza. There was a lot of backwards and forwards about different styles, different configurations, because we've had to deal with oh, strip yeah. sizes for components. That okay, dictates quite I, a lot. I, this is, that's, that's what I'm envisioning right there, like uh, kind of like a hardened, like Hell's Angels on the planet, just chilling out in bikes and, and causing the havoc, causing chaos. Like, I'm down with that. Like, that's when I saw the thumbnail. That's what it inspired in me. I thought to myself, like, I want to be like in a Hell's Angel bike gang and this bike is going to do it for me like so i was i was down that's why i clicked on this and that was the inspiration behind me like starting this up again I'm like you know this is exciting this looks like a neat idea like discussing about like having bike gangs kind of cool like that's kind of cool actually you'll stick to your stealthy knocks the knocks is super sexy this the knocks is super sexy it's a lot of we all know that onto your design <laughs> Red. people will see straight away that that's true the, the over the water thing's cool DNA but like this is so starcraft Terran right now <laughs> i'm really excited about this concept i can't wait for it to get into the community's hands so they angle can brings up like a really good talking point he says personally he doesn't like the sc becomes too much planet oriented says angle we have spaceships why the hell should i spend hours to get from a a to b when i have the freedom of flying i'm a flyer i love to fly but i also understand like people that are like homebodies that want to stay on planets or like build their own little thing on a planet and like stay there and make it their own thing so like i'm not against it like necessarily as vehemently as you are angle but i love the fact that there's that kind of like i want as many play styles offered as possible I th and i think that if we can offer as many play styles as possible it's going to bring in as many people as as we can we just got to be careful we don't go overboard because if we're offering every type of play style that's going to take forever to finish and that's the big talk right that's the big talk okay dy hurry back i love starcraft too i love starcraft the terrain too. beneath their feet and uh start their own biker gangs so what did we learn this week? We learned that the sound of exploding spaceships is truly the international language. When having major battles in Korea or the underground facilities, it's important that you can actually see what's happening. Game of Thrones. <laughs> what? And motorcycles are still super cool in the year 2949. To our subscribers, 
Darth says, I could see the appeal of the wheeled bike over hover bike. Totally, Darth. Totally. Especially now the hovercraft flight model is not ready. Yes, that as well, Darth. So like I I am, you know, like that's that's kind of like the, the debate between a gas powered vehicle and an electric uh, powered vehicle, Darth. Like that's what it reminds me of, you know, Pi says, but why buy a tumble bike and hit rocks all day instead of buying a hover bike for that same gritty, earthy feeling that some people need, Pies. I, like I said, it goes right back to that analogy of like the people talking about like gas powered versus electric power today in real life like that. I think that's what it like uh, what what it what it builds itself up to be pies. Uh, Bear says, I am also not against it. I just want more reason to take a ground vehicle to a place where you can get uh, not get with your ship. Yes. Interesting. Very cool. Are they done already with this? That's another thing, too. Like sometimes I miss the length of the ATVs or the older ATVs. And now with this Star Citizen review, I get what they're doing. And some days like I'm cool with the length and other days like I want a little bit more uh, to the episodes. So Dara says it's probably easier to control or more fuel efficient. <laughs> I think they're done right, with for it making already. Each episode Gonna have to do this more. And to everyone, we'll see you next week. All right. So I hope you guys enjoyed our first episode here. I'll put this on YouTube. Please tell your friends of the uh inside star citizen review and once i have like four or five of these i'll put a playlist thanks for watching. i'll put i sound like chris now don't i <laughs> thanks for watching the uh, inside star citizen review no but seriously like it's nice to be back guys first time streaming i just want a little taste i just wanted to dip a toe in and i think it went pretty well not a lot of technical difficulties I, I appreciate you guys showing up and like on Thursdays, what I'm going to start doing is I'm going to start letting you guys know in the discord in the star citizen channel, maybe where, you know, if I'm going to do them or not, I'll let you know either way on Thursday and I'll just let you know in the star citizen channel and in, on my um, discord, which I'm going to put right here for you guys. If you guys aren't in it, I know some of you guys left, which is fine. Um, there's the invite for anybody that wants to join our discord. It's really super mellow, really great community. It's so nice to see you guys come back and just chill with me. I missed you guys so much and I will start streaming a lot more coming up in the summer months, but I am going to do, try to do every Thursday for you guys to be here to start this new series. And then I will like get back into telling you about the lifestyle, uh, uh you know, games and we'll play like different type. I'm really into apex right now. So there's going to be a, like a lot of different, uh, things that we're going to be up to stream will start getting more steady for you guys and i thank you guys so much with everything i've been through with my mother and you guys just chilling out here just sticking with me and showing up today i didn't even think i'd get this kind of response today so this is really awesome to see everybody here and i gotta say from bottom of my heart thanks guys and i will see you on the next fitter stream thanks guys <laughs>